Now, with your song, In My Hood, mm-hmm. man, take me, man, because I can remember when I first heard that shit. <laughs> that shit went crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, the inspiration, and I think at this time, this is what, like 2000 what? Is it? Well, I actually recorded In My Hood, I believe, in 2004, but it didn't actually come out until 2005. Got you. Yeah. Now, this is a time, like, you got the Kings of Crunk, that little John kind yeah. of movement, yeah. Crunk sound yeah. movement. Uh, yeah. What were your influences when you created that song? And like, take me through that process. Okay, well, okay. So first of all, shout out to Kid, the producer. Um, I met Kid. Okay, so, okay, so what happened was one day, um, you know, I had started picking up a little buzz from doing records with. I was on Wine's album, The Real Me. I had been on two of Blaze projects. I was on the Dirty Glove album. Um, and maybe a, a, a couple of more things I had been on. So once people started to see that I was getting good and people were looking at me like, you know, he can perform and he knows, you know, he know how to do these things. So it was kind of like Juan started taking a liking into me as an artist the most. Okay. And I remember one day Juan, he called me and he said, you know, if you could work with any producer on an album, who would you want to work with? And I was like... Give me a minute and I'll get back at you on that. I need to find some, find some things out. So at the time, BG was fresh from leaving Cash Money Records with Birdman, Lil Wayne, and all of them. Yeah. And BG dropped maybe like three songs and three videos, and he winded up on that project. He winded up going platinum on that mm. project once he left Cash Money. So when I was listening to his songs and watching the videos, I, every song that he was doing, I was like, listening to the beats and I was like like damn who who doing BG beats you know what I'm saying yeah. and sure enough man it just so happens that I found out that the guy who was doing BG beats was from Detroit Michigan so I called Juan back the next day and I was like man listen I said I just did my homework and I found out that they saying I don't know how true this is but they saying this guy who produced BG's last album is from here and his name is Kid. And Juan was like, give me 48 hours. I'm going to find him and see what I can find out. So like 48 hours later, Juan called me and he was like, mm-hmm, I found him. <laughs> I was like, yeah. He was like, yeah. He was like, actually, I got a meeting with him. I'm going to meet with him today. And um, Juan, I guess, went to the meeting with him or whatever. And Kid was originally under the impression that he was going to do an album with Juan. Because he wanted to work with Juan. And Juan ended up telling him the situation. So he gave Juan a beat CD with two beats on it. Juan brought the CD to me and he was like, Kid said, if you write a dope song on one of these beats, that he had considered doing an album on you. So long story short, I ended up writing to both beats. Okay. Uh, one, the first song that I wrote was Bang. Um, Second song that I wrote was Meet Me on the Floor. So after I recorded them two records with Kid, he was just like, he was like, hell yeah. Like, no, nah. he like, I'm fucking with dude. Matter of fact, I don't want to do nothing else but work with him. So maybe, um, I say maybe like two weeks after we had started working together, um, we began to create a system. And the system was either I would show up at Kia House early in the morning every day, and he would have a beat plan, and he would he would direct me. He wouldn't write for me, but he would direct me. He would say, if I came in a particular day, he would say, you hear this beat right here? I need you to talk about your real life, talk about something that hurt you in your life. You know what I mean? Yeah, okay. And then he would leave me in the room, and, and he would just leave and come back, and he'd be like, you finished? I'd be like, yeah. He'd be like, come on, let's record it. So that was like our thing. So I started to reverse it on him. Which brings us to the in my hood thing. So one day I woke up early in the morning. I was getting dressed to go to Kia House, and while I'm in the shower, um, certain female, but I don't want to say her name, but a certain female that I was dating at the time, she was talking junk to me while I was in the shower because she was from Seven Mile. Okay. So she was like, "Y'all Joy Road niggas kill me, some, some, some." And I was like, "Girl, you better shut up. You might get shot in my hood." <laughs> So she was like, boy, shut up. Ain't nobody going to do nothing, whatever. So then I was just playing around in the shower, and I start, I kept saying it. I was like, you might get shot in my hood, get stuck in my... So it started coming so dope to me that soon I jumped out the shower. 
<laughs> I ain't dry off or nothing. I just threw the towel around me, grabbed my phone. I called Kid, and I said the hook to Kid over the phone. I was like, man, I just came up with this shit. I was like, I don't know what you're going to do with it, but I, I feel it. And he was like, say it. So I started saying it to him on the phone. And he was like, you know what? He was like, don't even come over here today. Come over tomorrow. And I was like, I was like, all right. So maybe I think it was probably like six o'clock in the morning. It was like six o'clock in the morning the next day. And um, he was like, I don't care what you're doing. Come to my house right now. I got the beat for that song that you were saying to me. So I'm like, man, come on, man. He like, man, get up right now and come straight to my house. Come now. Stop playing. I'm like, man, all right, man. So I get up, brush my teeth, all of that, throw some on. I wasn't that far from his crib, so I shot down his crib. I walk in the crib and I hear the beat playing. Yeah, yeah. So he kid was like, come on, get in the booth. Let's lay this hook. And I'm like, well, wait a minute, because I haven't even. He's like, man, just get in the booth and just say what you're going to say. So I'm like, all right. So I go in there and I lay the hook. Then once I come out, I immediately, I'm like, it was like um, the words just started coming out of my mouth. You know what I mean? So first I started, I thought I was going to make this song just about my neighborhood. And then by the time I got to the second verse, I was like, no, nah. I said, you know what? This is my opportunity to clean up all the mess that's going on in the streets, in the city, because it was a lot of yeah. east side, west side, yeah. stuff going on, different neighborhoods was beefing. So I said, well, I got the platform, so here's my opportunity to close the gap on some of that shit. So with my second verse, I started just talking about other neighborhoods. And um, once we did that, then Kid was like, uh, he started changing up drum patterns. That's why you hear the... Ding, 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 yeah. ding, he started changing all that. And we like, we in the studio going crazy. So then we get into this big argument because Kid was like, he cut the music off. He was like, what you think about me screwing your voice? I was like, yeah, try it on the hook. That'll work. He said, no, not the hook. What if I do it to your verses? So I'm like, man, hell no. I don't, <laughs> don't screw mine. It's going to sound like somebody else rapping. And Kid was like, listen, bro, you just got to listen. So we argued for like two hours, and he finally said something that he could have said two hours prior. He was like, if it don't work, I could just click it off, and it'll go back to you. And I said, you should have said that two hours ago. So uh, he decided that he wanted to screw the verse because he felt like, you know, at that time, yeah. like you said, the crunk thing was going on, and people were screwing yeah. stuff, but they were screwing their hooks. Yeah. Kia said, we're going to flip it. We're going to screw the verse and not the hook. So I was like, you know, then once he played it and we, I started hearing myself going, I'm from Joy Roll, X and Nag. I was like, oh! Oh! <laughs> So, uh, you know, the rest is history, though. But, man, it was like, it was one of them, In My Hood, too, was one of those records where it wasn't accepted at first like people would think it would be. Mm. It wasn't accepted at first. It, we went through a hard battle, a hard fight uh, with In My Hood because it was... People had never really heard records like that on the radio before. Yeah. You know, back in the days, radio really catered to women and children. So for me to be coming up talking about different neighborhoods and, you know what I mean, gangster shit and all of that kind of stuff, trying to get it played on the radio was very hard, you know. Like, we really had to go make the, sh the streets is who forced, forced them it. to play in my gotcha. hood. Yeah. It's my first time ever even going to a meeting and bringing my record to a... Uh, um, to a radio station was in my hood and everybody was turning it down and me and Kid and Juan, we we knew in our hearts that this record was something. We knew it was something. You know what I mean? But the response we was getting from radio was like, nah, come with another record. Come with a dance song or come with a girl song right. or, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. And Juan was determined. Juan, Juan knew that in my hood was the record.